Hey everybody, it's Professor Williams. We're going to talk about hypothesis testing and finding critical values. So in hypothesis testing, a critical value is simply a point on the test distribution that we compare to the test statistic to determine whether to reject the null hypothesis. And the rule is pretty simple. If the value of your test statistic is more extreme or beyond the critical value, you can declare that you have statistical significance and you can reject the null hypothesis. The value of your critical value is going to depend on several factors. Firstly, your level of significance or alpha. Next is whether you're running a one or a two-tailed test. And then finally is your test distribution. In other words, are you using a Z distribution, a T distribution, or possibly a chi-squared distribution? So remember that the critical value simply separates your distribution into two regions, a reject or a fail to reject region. And in, this, in the case of a one-tailed right test, in which case we would have had an HA that looked like this, then our critical value would be here. Our rejection region is in the upper tail of the curve. In this instance, we had an HA <clears throat> that looked like less than, gives us a one-tailed left test, rejection region in the lower tail of the curve with a negative critical value. And in this case, we would have had an HA that looked like not equal to, splitting our alpha in two and giving us a rejection region both in the upper and the lower tail and giving us symmetrical critical values, one of which is positive and the other which is negative. When we're conducting tests using normal distribution and using a Z as our test statistic, we're going to find our critical values for Z from a normal distribution table. So in this example, I'm going to test at an alpha of 0.05, which meant that my alternative hypothesis looked like this. And so I have this rejection region in the upper tail. And what I know here is this is where my 0 0.05 is. So based on the normal distribution table I'm using, that leaves 45% of the data between the mean or the center of the distribution and this unknown critical value. So I'm looking for the number of standard deviations I need to move above the mean in order to strand 5% of my data in this upper tail of the curve. And so when I look at that, and I look at 45%, I come down here and I see that I have the situation where I have 0.4495 and 0.4505. And when I move back out in my distribution table, I see that gives me 1.6 because these are exactly the same distance apart. I'm going to split the difference, and I'm going to take the average of 1.64 and 1.65, which is going to give me a critical value equal to 1.645. So what I know is that for every one-tailed right test at an alpha 0.05, my critical value here will be 1.645. Had I been testing on the left side, I would have had a critical value of negative 1.645. Remember, that's because of the symmetry of our normal distribution. Because we have this symmetrical distribution when dealing with um, a Z, we have these standard critical values. And so what I have here for you is for a two-tailed test, in an alpha 0.10, your critical values will always be plus and minus 1.645. Alpha 0.05, critical values plus or minus 1.96. These are standard values, and as long as you can apply normal distribution and are using Z as a test statistic, then these values are correct for your critical values. In those instances where we cannot use a Z distribution, Generally, that is when we're running a test for the mean with the population standard deviation unknown. Then we use a T distribution. And we know that the T distribution is based on N minus 1 degrees of freedom. So if I looked at my 
example from earlier and I was going to test at an alpha equal to 0 0.05 and let's say that I had an n of 14 that would give me 13 degrees of freedom. So I'm going to find my alpha of 0 0.05. I'm going to come down here and find my 13 degrees of freedom. I'm going to find the intersection of the two and now I know my critical value is equal to 1.771. <clears throat> if I was running a two-tailed test at an alpha of 0 0.05, remember a two-tailed test, I'm going to split my alpha in two. That's going to give me 0 0.025. If I had my same N of 14, that would give me 13 degrees of freedom and I would have come over to my 0.025 as my column. I would have stayed with my 13 degrees of freedom as my row. That would have given me my critical value here of 2.160. So remember when we're using a T distribution, there are no standardized values that you can just memorize or write down on a cheat sheet you're going to have to come to a t, either a t distribution table or a t calculator and find your critical value based on your n minus 1 degrees of freedom. As always, I hope that you found this useful and thanks for watching.